Victor Axelson, we turn our attention to men's doubles, and it is the defending champions from Denmark, Kim Astrup and Anos Rasmussen, up against a French pair of Luca Corvey and Ronan Labar. Well, this match is from the bottom half of the draw. And if you were with us earlier, you will have uh, seen Hoki and Kobayashi coming through in three games. They're former world champions, of course. Uh, but uh, look at the result right at the bottom of this uh, bottom half, and that is the former world number ones, Liang Wei Kang and Wang Chang, have gone down to last week's winners, uh, Li Zhe Hui and Yang Po Xuan, and gone down in three games. So Chinese Taipei doing extremely well today so far. And here, the home pair of Luca Corve and Ronald Labar. Fourth consecutive appearance as a pair for the French combination. And it is the first time that they have got beyond the first round. Had a wonderful win yesterday against the three-time former world champions, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Sedjewan, to get through to this second round clash against the defending champions, Kim Astro and Anas Skarok Rasmussen. Well, this will be a fourth meeting between these two pairs. And... Uh, the French pair Black have never red. won a game, Black let alone you, a match. The last time they played was Your earlier choice. this year, just last month. Serve. Serve. This so, the French pair have chosen to serve, having won the toss of the coin. Yes, these two pairs met in the final of the European Men's Team Championships. At 21-13, 21-13, it was in 38 minutes. Astrup and Erasmussen, the dominance so far over uh, their French opponents. But look what happened in our last match. Victor Axelsen had been dominant over once away. So this is Luca Corvé, 30 years of age, from Alençon in Normandy, in northern France. A tall man, 190, that's just under six foot three. His partner is a little bit taller, one centimetre taller, which equates to just over six foot three, Roland Labar, who is now 34 years of age from Chatney Malabry in the southwest suburbs of Paris. Now, there's that result I was telling you about yesterday, an hour and six minutes uh, to beat Hassan and Seti One. Incidentally, Seti One uh, won this title twice with his former partner, Marcus Guido. That was back in 2008 and nine. Yeah, well, we've had French success in the mixed doubles a couple of matches ago. Can the home fans inspire more home success. Kim Astrup, well, uh, first of all, I'd like to wish him a belated happy birthday. It was his 32nd birthday yesterday. He and his partner are one place down from their career high of three, where they spent four consecutive weeks uh, throughout November last year. Anas Skarop Rasmussen turned 35 last month from Udda. Uh, which is about 20 kilometers south of Aarhus. Ready to play. They reached the final of the Indonesia Masters. In fact, that was their last uh, tournament uh, prior to this. Uh, so they're on a quest to reach two finals in two tournaments played. In the first round, uh, and that was yesterday, they played against their teammates, Daniel Lungar, Lungo and Mads uh, Vestergaard. Our uh, umpire for this one is Gunas Lasviras of Latvia. And service judge Sakamoto of Japan.
lost in the first round last week did this French combination in Mulheim at the German Open. In fact, had only won one match in individual competition so far this year. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Renan Labar and Luca Kobe, France. And on my left, Kim Astrup and Anders Kar Rasmussen, Denmark. Renault Labar to serve to Kim Astrup. Bravo. Play. So Renault Labar and Luca Corve on the side of the court as One. we look down Love. against the left and right handed combination of the defending champions. Astrup and Orasmussen. Steen, we weren't in Jakarta before the Indonesian Masters, but I know that both you and I watched uh, that and the Danes were playing well. They were they, playing well. They had a sensational year last year, didn't they? Yeah. Six finals, winning five titles in 2023. The only final they lost with the World Championship final. So silver medalists at the World Championships, having been bronze medalists at the World Championships Love. back in 2021. And to think that Anna's Rasmussen considered retirement in August last year. <laughs> <laughs> that had been the plan, hadn't yeah, it? Yeah. Until they started winning everything. Exactly. That's the thing when you practice and, and do things the right way. You never know when the uh, result is going to show up. All right in between the two French players. Three, now, some people, four. Steam, might not be that familiar with uh, Corvée and Labar. Uh, just tell us a little bit about them. I was uh, saying in the introductions, they're both very tall athletes, aren't they? Both very tall, and, and uh, they, I think they also paired up a little bit of a coincidence because Luca Covey, he was a former singles player, That's and right. Monan Labar uh, played a, a strong mixed double, I think. He played with Anne Tran, who's now focusing on women's double. Um, I'm not totally sure, actually, but but they uh, decided they would try their luck in, in men's doubles, and, and it's worked out um, very well for them. Um, the one win they got this year was in uh, Malaysia Open against a pair that I'd expected a lot from, uh, which sort of didn't really materialize, Kim Won Ho and Na Sung Sung. Um, so a, a super good win, and... and um, I think the win yesterday against the San Ansetio and will put them in the driver's seat for qualification. Yeah, for the Olympics. Yeah. Five then, um, a battle with the Popov brothers for one French spot there. Great play there by Anas Rasmussen. It's come, become much stronger on the uh, front court plate as Rasmussen. Well, Labar, listening to the advice of Kim Nielsen, the coach, and seemed to shake his head and have a little smile. Not sure whether that means that, well, it's more difficult to implement yeah. that or whether he doesn't agree with the advice. <laughs> Only he will know the Seven. answer to that. Well. Yeah, the, the difficult thing for the French pair is that they're, they're really strong in the attack. Two tall players can get a lot of steepness on their shots and so on, but it's, it's quite difficult for them to get on the attack against the Danes. And even if they get on the attack, the Danes have a reasonably solid defense. Right. And I think um, we, we've seen some combination. I mean, the Danes, they're, they're sort of made up of um, 
native front court player Kim Astrup and a native back court player Anders Rasmus, and they they develop in the opposite positions and so on. So we see some pairs that are um, with two natural front court players that um, pair up. I think the French they're actually both uh, natural back court players, so, and that um, makes it a little bit difficult for them to um, to get on so the attack when they're playing players that are strong on the front court. Here's Krzysztof Popov following his uh, French teammate. There wasn't the kiss cam there, was there? <laughs> Out. Yeah, service error. Service over. Two, eight. Well, you were mentioning that Luca Corvey used to be a fine men's singles player. He actually reached 35 on the world ranking. He reached 12 men's singles finals. But only won one Three, title. Eight. Yeah. And that was the 2016 Belgium International Challenger event. They're sort of like uh, <laughs> the survivors of the old generation of uh, French male uh, players, whether it's single or, or doubles. Um, the new generation with the Popo brothers, Anno Macle, Alex Lanier, uh, Tom Chiquel in the doubles and so on. Um, the hugely talented group of junior players that have now grown into seniors. Kobe and uh, Labar, they've survived. They're the dinosaurs of the uh, <laughs> French men's double at the moment. Luca, 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 the quicker, quicker. Yeah, trouble, little, little bit of trouble with the hearing when you get that old. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Steve. Everybody's youngsters in comparison to us. What? <laughs> 11, so three, to the mid-game interval. interval. And it's a very handsome lead indeed for the defending champions, Astrup and Rasmussen. An eight-point advantage. So I'm guessing that Thomas Stangle is pretty happy with his players so far. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> really? <laughs> No, he, he, of course he was, but he was emphasizing that they need to follow up. Um, rotational play and follow up, follow up, follow up. Um, that was super important. 12, three. And uh, yeah, I think that the Danes, they have, of course, focus on this match, but they also focus on how they want to play women's doubles, what, what's needed for them to be successful. In play. other words, they're working on things yes. even within this match. Yes, this is Three. a bit, yeah. that, that if, if you feel like, I mean, you have to respect your opponents, but but this is a match when the Danes are favourites and they've gotten off to a good start. So, so you can perhaps use a little bit of attention to working on your game, developing your game and, and getting settled in the tournament. Yeah. Service over for Serkin. Great. 
service return. Service over 14, four. There's a little bit of deception in it. You can see it from the body movements of uh, Ronan Labar. I have a feeling that the shuttles are a little bit uh, faster than they were yesterday. by the amount of time that's been taken. There, found the gap quite brilliantly. Service over, 15, six. Third lift long on the back line over. within the last seven. six, seven Fifteen. rallies from the Danes. That would suggest, especially after what we saw in our previous match, yeah, the men's singles, that the drift is different today. Yeah, yeah and I definitely think the shuttles are faster. I'm, I'm positive that the shuttles are faster today. Return. Deep into the backhand corner. French pair are just struggling to deal with the pace of this at the moment. Yeah, yeah. The pace of the interceptions. And there was the follow up. Thomas Tango asked for. 9 18. given the defending champions a whole host of game point opportunities. 
And he needed the one. Game 21 9. First game on by Kim Astrup and Anders Karp Rasmussen 21 9. Umpar confirming that scoreline. Only 14 minutes for that opening game. Okay, guys. Surf returns. Not over the middle three. But if we can't then do a bit too much over the mid, we need to try to play a bit more on the side. It looks like you have the fast side now, so maybe in the shoot on number four, then try to go over because they are ready to go for them. When we are in defense, where are they attacking us? Where are they attacking? Where do they hit you? Uh, a lot out on the side and then they cover the straight one. Yeah, so you need to be ready for both of you for that. A lot out on the side. I missed one thing in her. Remember we talked about in, in, in Malaysia too against India. That was this thing to believe. So that we are a little too satisfied after the victory yesterday. I want to see a lot more aggressive energy and commitment in her. That could be great. I know it's tough, it's not easy, but it is that we always uh, a reaction, always doing right. Yeah. You wanna change your old serve? Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Well, I didn't hear all of the coaching there from Kim Nielsen, but what I did hear was his desire to see a lot more energy yes. from the players. And I couldn't agree more. Exactly. Second game. Felt they'd gotten too confident or um, complacent, perhaps, Bravo. after the win yesterday against Asan and Setsuan. Play. And he also said that it seems like we're now playing the faster side, which sort of supports your theory that the yeah. uh, drift could have uh, changed. I was looking at um, the weather reports to see if the air density perhaps had changed. We learned yesterday from uh, talking to Professor Collet that air One density block. was super important in terms of shuttle speed but it seems like it's more or less the same air density yesterday as today yeah yeah we've learned an awful lot from professor Collet, haven't we yeah. uh, about how the shuttle spins and how left-handers uh, the spin is totally different getting across the feathers and, and the magnus effect of lifting the shuttle it's terrible to think how stupid we were yesterday morning <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> We've, we've been opened up to a whole new world. Exactly. The physics True of sport, love. the physics of badminton. It was absolutely fascinating. Oh, that's a good return. Service over. One, two. I understand what Kim Nielsen was saying. We, we need to have a little bit more extra belief, a little bit of aggressiveness and so on. But it's just really difficult when you've never really uh, taken a game off your opponent, never really been close to taking a game off, and, and you're, you're falling behind. It, it's, it's super hard to, um, to go into this battle. Even though I've seen Labar go into a battle in the mixed doubles with Matthias Christiansen, and he lost that battle uh, of words, so to speak. Good serve. Three, two. They were actually close. The first game they ever played against each so other. The Danes won that 22-20, but since then they haven't been close. Labar and uh, Kobe. Let, gentlemen, get ready. Oh, that's not. Oh, it's called out. Yeah. Service over. Three all. Good 
good oh, play. Oh, that's delightful. Luca Corve. Four, three. Finding the gap quite beautifully. That's a super shot. And they should realize now that if they are indeed playing the faster side, Kobe and Laban, then it's even more important that they get on the attack because then this happens that it gets a little bit more bite in terms that the shuttle arrives faster on the Dane side. They need to react quicker and maybe they're not ready for that because they won the first game so uh, convincingly. Yeah. Interceptions from uh, Thomas Five Rasmussen. All. Uh, there's no doubt you're right, Steen, about how he's improved his front court play, Rasmussen. I actually think it started, I think he started to grow in confidence when he played a couple of matches with uh, Frederick Sogard in um, either Thomas Cop or Huber Cop. Uh, no, not, not Huber, <laughs> definitely not Huber Cop. <laughs> Thomas Cop or <laughs> Sudirman Cop. That's the one. Um, where he, he uh, sort of discovered that he could also play at the front court. Until then, Astrid Rasmussen had been fairly locked into the uh, preferred positions, and they really seek those positions. So realizing that they actually, both of them could play in, in the other position, have uh, developed them as players and them as a pair as well. Seven, five. So four straight points. We don't we don't have them in the picture here, but I can see the, uh, Laban and Corbier standing, using a lot of time discussing, and this is this is the uh, crucial Eight, moment in terms five. of belief and so on. So, so they need to come up with a plan or or uh, get a little Back bit of help court. from the coaching bench in terms of a plan now. How one of the, part one worked, but now we need part two. I think they were ahead 5-3 or something, wasn't they? were. It? And now it's five straight points for the Danes. Make that six straight points. Nine. I think we five. can conclude that the drift has changed. Yeah. Yeah, immediate Ten, apology five. for hitting his opponent. Lovely, active, racket um, carriage there by Kim Astrup. The moment he played the third shot, his racket got up, ready to finish it on the fifth. Oh, this is extraordinary. 11 -5 interval. Eight straight points for an 11-5 lead at mid-game interval for the Danes, having already won the opening game. Desperate times to force so the measures, I think, for the French combination. The situation again. Is it possible we can go a little bit before time then, and then suck up the flick? Because if not, then we still lose. We still lose the rally if, if we can come out. Just a little, just, just a little bit forward so we can play down the shoes. If not, then start with a lift to the corner if we can come out of it. Just go to one, up, 20 seconds. Go to one, start like 20 okay, seconds. Eleven five play. Well, I'm not sure if there was 
anything specific there, Steam? Did it you, it was the service that? situation, solely focused on the service situation. Kim Nielsen, he said, so can, we, can we perhaps move a little bit ahead of time and then sort of just suck up the uh, flick serves if there is a flick? And, and it has been a problem for them. Kim Astrup, we know he has a good tumble serve. He's taken seven points in his own serve. Mm. So they need to get on top of that serve to be able to challenge the Danes. Seven, yeah. 11. But this was where we saw yesterday when we saw the Popo brothers play uh, Ho Chi Ting and Ren Xiang Yu. We saw this fight back, this uh, sort of craziness, and, and they uh, they gave a fight in the second game. They challenged the Chinese. And I think that's what, um, what the coaches are looking for. Good service return so by uh, Rasmussen. 12, 8. It's a question of uh, 5, 10 centimeters. If it's shorter, Labar gets to it. If it's longer, it's obvious that he shouldn't go for it, and, and Kobe will uh, will take it. This was perfect. Service over. Nine. The whole body language Whoa. is different now with the French pair, yeah. isn't it? They, uh, they they look as if they're hunting the shuttle, as if they want to be on court. They looked a little overwhelmed in the opening game. Yeah, well taken. Service over. I would like the, the French to, to lift Nine. flat. The first time they have to lift, lift flat and then come forward because they might as well take their chance on the first one. There's, there's no point. See, that's too soft. It's easy kill for Kimastro. There's no point in standing there waiting and saying, oh, we rely on our defense. Well, don't because it's not going to work. Yeah. Fourteen nine. Oh, that's, that's gone long. <laughs> he was unlucky. I was going to say that's Ten, the flick serve 14. you were talking about. But it looked a, look at that. It looked a lot like a, a tumble serve. Yeah. And he was totally gone, Labar. I think he yeah. even had closed eyes. Yeah. That's a good call from Astro to his partner to leave it. 15, 10. Yeah, I think 16, one of the big differences 10. between these two pairs to Stand me, Steam, is that when the Danes, when one of them is at the front, there's a lot of movement. Yeah. There's a lot of adjusting, even if their partner is hitting the, sh the shuttle, they're moving off the shuttle, yeah. they're adjusting their position. Whereas I think, as we saw in that last 16, rally, the 10. French players are a little bit static when they're at the front of the court. They are. And they're not working on the uh, rotation in the same kind of rotational play. You see, Labar is sort of out of that. Yeah. 17, 10. But I must say, it's, I mean, it's, I don't think, yeah, the sideways drift perhaps, but otherwise it's it's totally the opposite playing conditions from yesterday. Yeah. That That's yeah. a little bit um, concerning. It's very concerning. And, and some of the players we'll see do well here is is where the um, the um, 18, 10. strength of play level is where, where you've had a draw where the strength of level uh, strength of play level is so um, different that you can manage to get by uh, and then there's some that suddenly find oh this is a really really good conditions for me yesterday uh, yesterday it wasn't really that good but today it's, it suits me super well. 
Yeah. Well played. 19. And 10. two points away from a fourth quarter final at the French Open for the defending champions. One point away. 20 match point 10. 10 match point opportunities for Astrup and Rasmussen. It's a good flick serve again. Game. Wonderful final shot from Anna's Rasmussen. 21-9, 21-10. And the French resistance, sadly for the home fans, just fizzled out in that second game. And they looked good when they were 5-3 up, but it's not how you start, Match it's how you finish. Kim Astrup counts. and Anders Karp Rasmussen, 21-9, 21-10. Only 30 minutes for the victory. The defending champions looking extremely good. This is the final rally. Final smash. Threaded down the line to perfection. So in their eighth appearance at the French Open, Astrup and Rasmussen threw to a fourth quarter final. There is how they did it. 21-9, 21-10 in just 30 minutes. Serena here in Paris on day three of action here at the Yonex French Open. After men's doubles, we uh, revert uh, back to men's singles, and uh, this an interesting a match between Li Shi Fang, the Asian Games gold medalist, up against Laksha Sen, the Commonwealth Games gold medalist. Li Shi Fang, of course, was a beaten finalist a year ago here at this particular event, the French Open.